Tonight on Y News. Former Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario and former Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales remain undeterred following the International Criminal Court's decision to junk their case against China. Thousands of residents remain displaced as parts of Cagayan and Isabela are submerged in a massive flood after days of heavy rain. Prices of basic commodities to increase this month. Wish Covery Season 2 Grand Champion Rea Basco takes her first plunge into the waters of Mabini, Batangas. And Miss Universe 2019 crown unveiled. Good evening, uh, former Foreign Affairs Secretary Albert Del Rosario and uh, former Ombudsman Conchita Carpio Morales insist the International Criminal Court did not dismiss their communication against Chinese President Xi Jinping, but instead strengthened their resolve on the West Philippine Sea dispute. Rosalie Cos reports why. Complainants Albert Del Rosario and Conchita Carpio Morales seem to be not affected by the response of International Criminal Court or ICC Prosecutor Fatou Bensuda when she stated that she has no personal or territorial jurisdiction over the communication the two former Filipino officials filed. Del Rosario and Carpio Morales submitted a communication on March 15, 2019 against Chinese President Xi Jinping because of the alleged plan of China to control the entire South China Sea. The two also accused Chinese officials of crimes against humanity, which include the aggressive construction of artificial islands in the South China Sea, which brought massive environmental damages to the area. However, the ICC prosecutor says the court lacks personal jurisdiction since China is not a state party to the Rome Statute, the treaty that established the International Tribunal. The alleged crimes against humanity referred to in the communication took place in the exclusive economic zone and continental shelf and thus, in principle, outside of the territory of the country and is not encompassed by under the statute. However, Del Rosario and Morales insist the response of the ICC prosecutor is not a dismissal of their communication. They also say the prosecutor welcomes new facts and evidence to proceed with the case and that they are providing them. The prosecutor's response, they say, has only strengthened their resolve. President Rodrigo Duterte has mentioned before that the ICC has no jurisdiction over the Philippines nor over China. The Philippines formally left the International Tribunal on March 17, 2019, two days after Del Rosario and Carpio Morales filed their communication. China is not a party to the ICC. Rosalie Coz, UNTV News and Rescue. Meanwhile, the Philippine National Police, or PNP, insisted today that the allegations of abuses supposedly committed in President Duterte's so-called war on drugs were rehashed and unfounded. This as the International Criminal Court or ICC's Office of the Prosecutor earlier released its preliminary examination on the drug war where it said it had received allegations of abuses allegedly committed by law enforcers. On Thursday, the ICC Office of the Prosecutor said it has analyzed information to determine whether the alleged conduct of state actors and or other individuals amounts to the crimes against humanity of murder, torture, other inhuman acts or rape. It specifically cited the case where Caloocan City policemen were convicted by the court in November 2018 for the murder of 17-year-old Kian Lloyd de los Santos. De los Santos was initially said to be a drug suspect who was killed after resisting arrest in an anti-drug operation. Despite this, Banak said the PNP maintains the regularity of all police operation in its major campaigns against crime, illegal drugs, and terrorism, where the possibility of armed confrontation with suspects is always present. 
In other news, Ilig Ilagan City in Isabela has been placed under a state of calamity due to flooding brought about by northeast monsoon rains. The province of Cagayan is also expected to be placed under state of calamity today as towns remain submerged in flood water. Harleen Delgado has more of the details. Various parts of Cagayan and Isabela provinces remain submerged in flood water following days of heavy rains brought about by the northeast monsoon. The massive flooding in Cagayan can be seen through these aerial photos over towns of Igib, Amulong, and Alcala. In Pamplona, houses have been flooded and devastated. In Sanchez Mira, the public market is swamped with water. In Amulong, residents had to wait atop the roofs while waiting for rescue. Parts of towns Gonzaga and Santa Ana are also flooded. Bridges and roads are impassable due to the massive flooding. The Department of Public Works and Highway says the Cagayan Valley Road has remained impassable since yesterday. Meanwhile, the floods in Isabela left thick mud inside the devastated houses. The Cagayan Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office has enforced a preemptive and forced evacuation in towns near river systems. Magat Dam delayed its water release schedule this morning. Ilagan City in Isabela and the whole province of Cagayan have been placed on their state of calamity due to the flooding. Relief operations in the two flood-hit provinces are underway. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. The cost of damages in Quezon has reached 80 million pesos, authorities say. Over 31,000 families are affected by Typhoon Tesoy in the province. Jafet Kablaida reports. Three died in Quezon after Typhoon Tisoy hit the province, according to the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office, or PDRRMO. Two of the victims were killed by falling trees, while the other one was hit by lightning in Pulillo. 29 individuals sustained minor injuries, according to the PDRRMO's report. So yung kanila po mga injuries, minor lang, nat natusok, nahiwa, so yun nagasgasan after na po nung effect ng typhoon so nagaayos na po sila eh nahiwa habang inaayos less than 3000 houses were totally damaged while over 7500 were partially damaged more than 31000 families are affected by the effects of typhoon tisoy Devastation to agriculture was reached over 276 million pesos, while damages and losses in infrastructure are estimated at more than 581 million pesos. Meron pa rin pong mga bayan na wala pong kuryente. Okay, kasi that's why nahihirapan po silang magbato ng report kasi walang kuryente, wala rin pong signal ng cellphone. Sa mobile reception po, ang municipality po ng Ginyangan, Buena Vista, San Francisco, San Andres, and San Narciso, uh, still no network po, connection or communication. PDRRM Quezon continues to gather data from remote municipalities, which at present have no power supply and communication line. Japet Kablaida, UNTB News and Rescue, Lucena City. The Department of Health, or DOH, warns the public of diseases which are common in typhoon-stricken areas. The agency also assures readiness to address the public's medical needs. Aiko Miguel reports why. Thousands of Filipinos are affected by the onslaught of Typhoon Tisoy, parts of in southern Luzon. While portions of Isabela and Cagayan are submerged in flood water brought about by the non-stop rains for days. In times of typhoon and flooding, the health department expects an increase in number of people who get sick. According to the Department of Health or DOH, the common diseases during and after a typhoon are cough, colds, flu, gastroenteritis, pneumonia, typhoid fever, cholera, leptospirosis, hepatitis A, hypertension, dengue, and malaria. To avoid these diseases, the public is advised to get drinking water from a clean and safe source. When in doubt, boil the water for two minutes before drinking it. Wash hands regularly before eating and after using the toilet. If water is not available, use alcohol or sanitizer. People usually get sick because of dirty hands. When there's leftover food, cover it and keep it away from household pests. 
Avoid wading in flood water, especially when a person has an open wound, to avoid being infected with leptospirosis. Keep yourself dry and warm to prevent catching cold, which often leads to flu and pneumonia. The DOH assures preparedness to respond and give whatever medical assistance is needed. May kompleto tayo ng gamot, kompleto tayo ng uh, mga tao, at syempre bumuo din tayo ng mga teams, mga uh, health emergency medical teams, no? that they're the ones now providing the uh, care, uh, yung tinatawag natin water and sanitation uh, and hygiene, the uh, uh, mental uh, and psychosocial uh, health services and uh, all the logistics supplies it is best to obey authorities to keep yourself healthy and safe especially when a calamity is expected to hit the country aiko miguel untv news and rescue dagupan pangasinan the Department of Agriculture expects an increase in the prices of basic commodities in the market this month. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. Prices of basic commodities change from time to time. The Department of Agriculture, or DA, identifies several factors that affect these changes. Number one, again, uh, demand. Number two, supply always have to be a factor. Number three, uh, young weather. So it's a confluence of events. According to Secretary Dar, Typhoon Tisoy resulted in a low production of some basic commodities, particularly fish and vegetables. But the DA hopes to resolve the concerns in fish supply within the next two weeks through its ongoing process of importation of small pelagic fishes including mackerel, round scat or galunggong, and others. The optimum harvest time of vegetables starting this month is also expected to lower demand, hence their price in the market. In the meantime, vendors and consumers find alternative ways to get by. Pinakamabili ngayon talaga, Mano. Lugi ba? Lugi. Tignan mo nga ang galunggong ko. Lugi yan. Mahal din ang Mano. Kaya ayun, paano lang muna. Medyo mas mura-mura sa kaulo. The DA, on the other hand, encourages consumers to buy pork to help hog racers recover from their losses due to the recent African swine fever issue. Secretary Dar explains ASF does not affect humans. He also assures that meat sold in local markets undergoes a thorough process. Despite these, the DA anticipates a small increase in the prices of basic commodities this month due to an increase in its demand as consumers tend to buy more goods using their cash bonuses in December in preparation for the holiday season. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. Wishcovery Season 2 Grand Champion Rhea Basco discovers the underwater beauty of Mabini with the dive team. Rhea's first scuba diving experience in Anilao inspires her to visit more diving destinations across the Philippines. Maribel Boral Kabling reports why. Over 80 beaches and dive resorts are located in Mabini. That's why it is dubbed as the diving capital of Batangas Province. It has 26 world-class dive sites. Four of these are protected marine sanctuaries. Arthur's Rock, Patong Buhay, Queen Rocks, and a popular cathedral dive site. It is also the home of the birthplace of Philippine scuba diving, Anilao. It is not only famous among underwater photographers but also those who want to try scuba diving. Just like the viral singing dentist which covered his season 2 grand champion, Rhea Pasco. She says one of her dreams is seeing what lies under the sea through scuba diving. Kinakabahan ako kasi first time ko so hindi ko alam ko ano yung mangyayari underwater ganyan. Pero at the same time excited ako kasi uh, ako kasi mahilig ako sa mga underwater creatures eh. Yung Little Mermaid kasi favorite ko yun. During her introductory dive, Rhea expressed how she got captivated by the beauty of Mabini's underwater paradise. Nung nakapag-dive na ako, nasa ilalim na ako ng water, wala ka nang ibang maisip kundi ang ganda Paano, paano nagawa yan dyan sa ilalim? Paano, sobrang ganda, hindi, hindi ko talaga ma-explain. 
Rhea's first ever dive has made a lasting impression on her. After ng experience ko dito sa Anilao, gusto kong ulitin siya and sa iba-ibang location naman sa Philippines para ma-experience and makita ko yung ganda ng Pilipinas. Know the reasons why scuba diving in Anilao should be added on your bucket list and be captivated by the spectacular maritime jewels of Mabini as Rhea shares her first scuba diving adventure this Sunday, 11 a.m. in the country's diving body, The Dive. Only on UNTV. Maribel Boral Kopli, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Welcome back to Y News, and here are the headlines. President Rodrigo Duterte to send a former chief negotiator and now Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III to talk with CPP founder Joma Sison. 11 million pesos worth of misdeclared food products and used clothes seized by the Bureau of Customs at the Manila International Container Port. National Capital Region Police Office beefs up security in Camp Bagong Diwa for the promulgation of the infamous Maguindanao Massacre on December 19. Water rates in Metro Manila to increase in 2020. And the Philippines ice to bid to host the 2030 Asian Games. Heads up, Maynila and Manila water customers, the water rate may increase in the coming days. And despite a slight rise in the water level of Angat Dam after days of rain, authorities continue to remind the public to conserve water. Harleen Delgado explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte orders to review the government's agreement with Manila Water and Maynilad, a new water rate hike looms. An increase of almost 3 pesos per cubic meter will be implemented by the two water concessionaires starting January 2020. As early as now, some of their customers are lamenting the hike. Mabigat para sa amin, syempre. Mahirap ang buhay, pamahal ng pamahal. Siyempre, may epekto talaga. Dagdag, dagdag, dag, ano yun eh, gastusan. Napakahirap. Kasi nung laging nawawala, dumoble yung babayaran namin. Tapos ngayon na naman, tataasan na nun na naman sa hirap ng buhay ngayon ma. The water hike is on top of another looming increase brought about by the Foreign Currency Differential Adjustment or FCDA, which is a pass-through charge that accounts for the foreign exchange losses or gains from paying its borrowings. The Metropolitan Water Works Storage System or MWSS has earlier approved the rate for basing adjustment of Maynilad and Manila water, which will be done every five years. A water rate hike of 5 pesos and 73 centavos was approved for Maynilat, while 6 pesos and 22 centavos to 6 pesos and 50 centavos was approved for Manila water, which will be implemented in trenches until 2022. However, amid the rate increase, customers will still experience water service interruptions. The National Water Resources Board has yet to add allocation for Metro Manila despite the rise of Angat Dam's water level. This morning, Angat Dam's water level was 195.02 meters, far from its normal operating level of 210 to 212 meters. Authorities have been minding the public to conserve water for the water reserve to suffice until the dry season. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Kazan City. President Rodrigo Duterte will send former government chief negotiator and now Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello to talk to Communist Party of the Philippines founder Jose Maria Joma Sison. President Duterte is not giving up hope in reopening peace negotiations with the communist group. Rosalie Cos details why. President Rodrigo Duterte seems to give a hint that he wants to begin negotiating again with the communist rebels. This is by sending former chief of the government peace negotiating panel, Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III, to talk with Jose Maria Sison, the founder of the Communist Party of the Philippines and the chief consultant of the National Democratic Front, or NDF, which deals with the Philippine government. This is the first time that I will reveal it. I'm sending... Uh... Secretary Bello, Comunista naman talaga ito siya. So, he should go there. 
talk to them and uh, may may I, I cannot I cannot talk to about it. Basta he I'm, I'm sending him back to season and uh, talk to him about malaman ng ninyo yan pag uh, this was the chief executive statement during a situation briefing by the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council or NDRMC on the effects of Typhoon Tisoy in Legazpi City, Albay on Thursday night. President Duterte said he is not losing hope there will be peace talks again with the communist rebels. This is despite the fact he himself terminated the formal peace negotiations and the service of the government peace panel in March 2019. Three times we attempted to talk sense dito uh, and it has always failed. Ang ano ko ngayon, I, I, I cannot stop. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin, ayaw ko na makipag-usap. That is not a statement of a, a leader. Of the president. The ties between the president and Sison turned unpleasant because of the alleged continued attacks of communist rebels against government forces despite the ongoing peace talks. If he agrees, ito ang sabi ko last card. When say my last card is, my time is running out. Sison is in the Netherlands as a political refugee. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. Six containers of smuggled products were seized by the Bureau of Customs today at the Manila International Container Port. Authorities consider donating the items once guaranteed safe to the victims of calamities in the country. Dante Amento details why. The Bureau of Customs, or BOC, seized today six containers that contained misdeclared items at the Manila International Container Port. Five of the containers ferried corned beef from Brazil and Arabica coffee beans from Hong Kong. The other container carried used clothing from South Korea. The shipments were declared as brand new clothes, ketchup, textile auxiliaries, and crackers. Authorities estimate the seized imported products at 11.34 million pesos. The food items were consigned to JL Twin Enterprises and the used clothing to Five Jock Enterprises. Sigurado po ako ngayon lang eh, nag-aaway na yung porter o broker kung bakit nahuli ito. Mga 2 million to 3 million po yung nawala sa kanila kada container or 1.7 million. BOC Assistant Commissioner Vincent Philip Marunilla said aside from being misdeclared, the shipment had no import permit. The items are not included on the Food and Drug Administration of the Philippines' list of safe products. The FDA will examine the product safety. Once guaranteed safe, particularly the food items, they may be considered to be given to victims of calamities. There's some way that the FDA can, can guarantee the safety of these products. We can either sell it through auction or uh, donate it to the victims of calamity. Natin. Dan Diamento, UNTV News and Rescue, City of Manila. The guard manning the gates at Camp Bagong Diwa, Taguig City, have been replaced with over 200 personnel in full battle gear. Cat National Capital Region Police Office Acting Director Police Brigadier General Dibold Sina says a lockdown will be implemented and no visitors will be allowed on December 19. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. The National Capital Region Police Office, or NCRPO, begins to intensify its security inside and outside Camp Bagong Tiwa in Taguig City today. This is for the promulgation of the murder case against those charged for the Maguindanao Massacre on December 19. NCRPO Acting Director, Police Brigadier General De Sina says he has replaced the guards securing the gate. It is now manned by 240 personnel from the Regional Mobile Force Battalion in full battle gear. Whole of Camp Bikutan starting ngayon. Kasi ngayon palang nag-ready na kami. No, iniikutan na yung mga barangays na sa tabi, lalo na yung mga bahay sa tabi ng gates. The NCRPO will implement a lockdown in the camp and will not accommodate visitors to avoid any untoward incidents on the day of the promulgation. 
rallies will not be welcome. Diba na kaming nilagay ng mga, mga CCTV sa mga gates para malaman kung sino yan. At pinapatanggal yung sombrero kung mag-register ka para makuha yung mukha. The Supreme Court or SC will handle the request for media coverage since the area where the promulgation will take place is under the SC's jurisdictions. Sinas has also tasked Quezon City Police District Director, Police Brigadier General Ronnie Montejo to give police escorts to Quezon City Regional Trial Court Branch 221, Judge Jocelyn Solis Reyes and other lawyers who will attend the promulgation. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. Quezon City. Sadness was replaced by smiles after the Bible Reader Society International visits several families displaced by fire in a small community in Cebu City. Gladys Tawabi reports. Tens of families got displaced after a fire burned down 80 houses in Barangay San Roque, Cebu City last November 3. Little by little, they pick up what's left of what used to be their homes and try to rebuild and recover. To help the affected residents, especially the children who lost their school supplies and necessities, the Bible readers or Bread Society International decided to give gifts in their own little way. Through this activity, Bread Society wants to inspire the children to rise again and continue their studies. In behalf of the thankful that the students were very glad and thankful for witnessing their fellow men care for them. Para sa mga bata, dakso na kayo sa impact, dakso na kayo matabang kayo. Ang uban mo ka sa Karangri, labi na sa amuang sikyo, sa mga barangay is urban poor. So, amu ang, amu ang, amu ang dakong pasalamat, bigan sa bread, nga nagkatag sila mga ginagmay nga school supplies. Basta kanina lang nga, ilang yata nga kinasingkasi. The sadness they felt because of the fire incident was temporarily replaced by sweet smiles with the society's visit. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue, Cebu City. The recent 2019 Business and Leadership Awards recognize businesses and individuals who excel in their respective fields, including in public service, entrepreneurship, health and wellness, and entertainment. Among those awarded are the 70s band Boyfriends. My Bermudas details this report. Individuals behind successful and inspiring people in the world of public service, entrepreneurship, real estate industry, financial management, medical field, health and wellness, and entertainment were recognized at the 2019 Elite Business and Leadership Awards on Thursday. Among them is a musical Filipino group popular in the 70s, The Boyfriends. <laughs> of course, we really feel so good, no? Uh, especially uh, yung mga songs namin ay <laughs> nire-revive ng mga, ng mga young artists. Yeah. Young artists. And uh, of course, meron din mga young bands, young groups na kasama sa line-up sa repertoire nila yung mga songs namin. Oh. A very interesting awardee is Mayor Reynaldo Concepcion of Tanhay Negros Oriental, who began as a cleaner but is now a local chief executive and outstanding in public service. Hindi ko siya pinangarap. Then hindi ko rin siya hiniling sa Diyos. Hindi ko rin siya pinagdasal sa simbahan. Kundi uh, masaya na akong tumulong sa kapwa-tao. Masaya na akong makipagsalamuha sa tao na hindi ko alam na yung palang patutunguhan ko ay politika na. The desire to help overseas Filipino workers build their own business is what keeps the Marianos pushing for success. Their enterprise has now about 30 franchises across the country. So isa lang siya sabi nila, gusto gusto nila makauwi. Kaya lang, wala silang opportunity na para kumita ng pera para mabuhay yung pamilya nila. Pero gusto gusto nila makauwi kasi miss na miss na nila kasi ilang birthday na yung di nila natinan sa mga anak nila. 
Another remarkable awardee is Marcid Blue Purified Drinking Water, a water refilling station for 18 years that now has around 150 stations nationwide. It was chosen as Premier Water Refilling Station. Part of Marcid Blue's revenues goes to charitable works. But what is their secret to success? Una, syempre tayo lahat, dapat una sa lahat magtiwala tayo sa Diyos. Sa magagawa ng Diyos sa atin, uh, sasamahan tayo sa ating mga paggawa. According to Elite Magazine Editor-in-Chief, Director Ace Rocha, their organization recognizes even startups. Apart from recognizing the mark that they have done in their own industries, regar um, regardless of, let's say, unique selling proposition, advertising, usage of our advertising and marketing tools, client feedback, customer relations, or um, or maybe a breakthrough product, nare-recognize kasi kahit baguhan pa lang, promising. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. Members Church of God International or MCGI has been recognized by Gawad America as the 2019 Outstanding Religious Christian Organization Worldwide. Sunny Cause reports. What started from humble beginnings is now widely known as an international religious organization. Members Church of God International or MCGI led by the overall servant and international televangelist Brother Eli Soriano and assistant to the overall servant Brother Daniel Razan is humbled with a recognition given by Gawad America in Los Angeles, California. MCGI has recently been awarded as the 2019 Outstanding Religious Christian Organization Worldwide. Majority of the congregation's members are Filipino, but through Brother Eli and Brother Daniel's continuous global evangelization, through the multi-award winning religious program Ang Dating Daan, people from different countries and continents join MCGI. Ang Dating Daan also air as The Old Path in English, El Camino Antigo in Spanish, O Camino Antigo in Portuguese, and Il Sentiero Antico in Italian on their YouTube channels and official Facebook pages. MCGI's milestone does not only include its global evangelization but also its continuous charitable works like blood donation drives, medical missions, feeding programs, gift giving, elderly care home visits, cleanup drives, free rides, free education, and a lot more. Ang Dating Daan itself has been recognized by Gawad America as the most informative religious program in 2006 and the best religious program in 2011. Gawad America Awards is a yearly celebration and acknowledgement of the achievements of Filipino Americans and outstanding Filipinos, particularly individuals and groups that push for innovative projects and new ideas. Sinecos UNTV News and Rescue, Los Angeles, USA. Welcome back to Y News. The Manila City Council passes a resolution declaring militant group Panday Sining persona non grata in the nation's capital. This after repeatedly violating the anti-vandalism ordinance of the city of Manila despite the warnings given by Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso himself. 
Last Saturday, four of Panday Sining members, including a minor, were arrested by the Manila Police District after getting caught in the act of vandalizing a post of the LRT Recto Avenue station. The Manila City Mayor vows to make the violators accountable to the law. Authorities inspected a firecracker stalls in Bokawe, Bulacan, which is known for its fireworks industry and as a popular destination for revelers. Nestor Torres details this report. Days before the country celebrates during the holiday season, authorities inspected stalls that sell fireworks and firecrackers in Bukawi, Bulacan. The Philippine National Police, the Department of Trade and Industry, and the Provincial Government of Bulacan jointly inspected a firework stall in RL Castillo and one fireworks manufacturer in San Rafael. Authorities wanted to make sure the fireworks pass the Philippine safety standard. Ito po katulad nito, no? may PSICC, PS mark siya. Ibig sabihin, nakapasa ito dun sa kailangang standard o pamantayan ng produkto para sa ating paputok. A PS or Philippine Standards Mark assures consumers that what they purchase are certified quality and safety products conforming to the relevant Philippine national standards. The authorities found that the stall they inspected are compliant with the agency's guidelines. Para makatagod din tayo dun sa utos sa Presidente, di ba? na yung mga pwede lang napaputok yung pwedeng ibenta at the same time palagi i-put into mind yung safety ng public yung gagamit. Who's found to violate Republic Act No. 7183 or the law regulating the manufacture, sale, distribution, or use of firecrackers face to fine ranging from 20,000 to 30,000 pesos or a prison term of 6 months to 1 year. Vendors also face cancellation of license and business permit plus confiscation of their stocks. Iba na po yung nag-iingat, siyempre. Malaga yun. Kung uh, iisipin natin na uh, kikita nga tayo ng malaki, kung makakaprevision naman tayo, no? di ba? Ang, ang gusto naman ng Pangulo yung limitahan. Alam po, malimitahan. Alam po, para dun sa kaligtasan. Nestor Torres, QNTV News and Rescue, Bulacan. And for the news abroad, France ground to halt with a strike that paralyzed public transport services as millions took to the streets to protest President Emmanuel Macron's pension reforms. This report details why. Widespread travel disruption is expected to continue in France for a second day on Friday as the largest nationwide strike in years continues. Workers from a wide range of sectors are protesting against pension reforms. More than 800,000 people took to the streets on Thursday, with violent clashes reported in a number of cities. Widespread rail cancellations and disruption to flights are expected on Friday, with only a fraction of the capital's transport system working. Paris's bus and metro operator have said their walkout will last until Monday at least. Other unions are expected to decide on Friday about their further strike plans, Reuters reports. Many French workers are angry about President Emmanuel Macron's plan to introduce a universal points-based pension scheme. It would replace France's current system, which has 42 different pension schemes across its private and public sectors with variations in retirement age and benefits. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue. The World Health Organization said more than 140,000 people died from missiles in 2018 after cases surged worldwide due to a collective failure in vaccination against the disease. Kath Dumaraos reports. More than 140,000 people died from measles in 2018 worldwide, according to new estimates from the World Health Organization and the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. These deaths occurred as measles cases surged globally amidst devastating outbreaks in all regions. Most deaths were among children under 5 years of age. Measles is preventable through vaccination. However, vaccination rates globally have stagnated for almost a decade. WHO and UNICEF estimate that 86% of children globally received the first dose of measles vaccine through their country's routine vaccination services in 2018, and fewer than 70% received the second recommended dose. 
We have a safe, effective measles vaccine that's been used for 50 years. Hundreds of millions of people have been immunized safely with this vaccine. And now fewer people are getting vaccinated than need to be vaccinated to prevent cases and outbreaks. In 2018, the most affected countries were Democratic Republic of Congo, Liberia, Madagascar, Somalia and Ukraine, where many children have persistently missed out on vaccination. These five countries accounted for almost half of all measles cases worldwide. Every child needs to be vaccinated against measles. What WHO is doing is supporting the outbreak responses by assuring everybody in that outbreak is getting vaccinated to avoid illness. For those kids who are already ill, we're supporting the care of those children to assure that they survive the illness. And we're also supporting governments so that they have a much stronger immunization program. Over the last 18 years, measles vaccination alone is estimated to have saved more than 23 million lives. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Italy wants traditional Italian espresso to be inscribed on UNESCO's list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Nino Armilio tells us why. Smooth, dark, and diminutive. It is an affordable and indispensable jumpstart to the day for millions of Italians. And now, the country is pushing for World Heritage Recognition for its Espresso Coffee. Italy argues that espresso made in traditional coffee machines in bars and cafes across the country is not only a distinctive beverage, but also an integral part of the country's cultural heritage. Cappuccino and macchiato may have their followers, but espresso remains as the pure elemental expression of Italian coffee. Espresso will be put forward as a candidate for UNESCO listing at an event on Tuesday in the Italian Parliament in Rome. The bid is being promoted by a grandly titled entity called the Consortium for the Safeguarding of Traditional Italian Espresso Coffee. The Italians want espresso, a slug of black coffee served in tiny white porcelain cups and costing around 1 euro, to be inscribed in UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage, a compendium of customs, carnivals, ceremonies, and traditions from around the globe. Italy was successful two years ago in having the art of Neapolitan pizza making recognized as a part of the world's intangible cultural heritage. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the stories from around the globe. I am Jovic Bermas. Good evening. House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano now pushes for the Philippines to bid for the 2030 Asian Games hosting. New sports facilities may also be built in other regions of the country once the hosting of the 2030 Asian Games is confirmed. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. House Speaker Alan Peter Caetano and Philippine Olympics Committee President Rep. Abraham Tolentino are preparing a memorandum to be addressed to President Rodrigo Duterte. The memorandum seeks to ask permission to the President if the Philippines could bid for the hosting of the 2030 Asian Games. The move came from the suggestion made by Olympic Committee of Asia Vice President Wei Ji Zong after he was captivated by the capacity of the Philippines to host the 30th Southeast Asian Games. The President will have to weigh in and give his okay. And the next President and the President after that will have to be very supportive. Kaitanu added that hosting sports events or sports tourism is a big industry that can provide jobs and income to Filipinos. Once the hosting of the 2030 Asian Games is confirmed, this will prompt the government to build new sporting facilities even in the Visayas and Mindanao. So imagine if in the next 10 years we can build two or three centers in Visayas, uh, another three centers in uh, Mindanao. Then ayusin natin ang Clark, tapos uh, Southern and Northern Luzon. We can be a sports power, no? Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives.
The Philippines continues to dominate in the 30th Southeast Asian Games. As of 7 p.m., the Philippines garnered a total of 172 medals, 70 golds, 53 silvers, and 49 bronzes. Ranking in second place is Indonesia with a total of 126 medals. They collected 39 gold medals, 41 silvers, and 46 bronzes. Meanwhile, Vietnam moves to the third place in the overall medal tally with 130 medals, 38 gold, 41 silver, and 51 bronze. The judiciary magis intensify their practices for a chance to a quarterfinal slot. Meanwhile, PITC Global Traders will attempt to match NHA Builders' run and gun game. Bernard Dadis reports. Two-time champion Judy Sherry Magis head coach Joey Yawut promises his team will work out more intensified training as they target one of the quarter-final slots this season of the League of Public Servants. After effectively crushing AFP Cavaliers' tight defense and tainting the defending champion's record, the Magis are with high morale to lift their current 7th place standing. With originally 12 teams in the opening, eight teams remain to battle it out towards the quarterfinals. The top two teams will automatically earn semi-final slot. Round 7 and 8 will be eliminated as the second round elimination ends in early January. Field Health Plus cases Judiciary at 2 p.m. on Sunday in San Juan Gymnasium. Mas uh, lalo pa namin ano, uh, dadagdagan mga drills namin para maka-straight kami nitong second round at nang makapasok kami ng quarter final. BITC Global Traders will try to match NHA Builders' run-and-gun game with their own speed as the two sides clash in the second game at 3.30 p.m. With four wins and two losses, Global Traders will face fifth-ranked Builders who now has a 4-3 win-loss record. Every game naman mabigat kalaban namin kasi maliliit kami. Ang advantage ko lang talaga is for us to run. So, so far, na kukuha naman namin yun. Sana magtuloy-tuloy nga. Ibibuild up ko lagi yung aming offense saka defense saka kailangan namin manalo diretso eh. Kung di, mahirapan kami sa susunod na round. And in the third game, AUP Cavaliers and Malacanang PSC Kamao will both aim for a comeback after the two suffered upset last week. The Cavaliers fell to the second spot with six wins and one loss after losing to Judiciary. Kamao team follows on the third spot with five wins and two losses. Sabi ko naman sa akin, forget ko ano yung nangyari ngayon. Let's move on kung ano yung susunod natin na game. We'll just prepare hard na lang. Total. First loss, it's anybody's ball game. Prepare kami sa sunod na game. The people header will air live from San Juan Gymnasium on Sunday on UNTV with live streaming on UNTV News and Rescue's Facebook page and on our website, UNTVweb.com. Burger Dallas, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. Miss Philippines Gazzini Ganados is in Atlanta, Georgia, getting ready for the 2019 Miss Universe Beauty Pageant. Gazzini shares she hopes for fellow Filipinos to root for her as she continues her journey in the 68th edition of the prestigious beauty pageant. This report details why. The new Miss Universe is... Walk 
The Miss Universe 2019 crown was unveiled in Atlanta, Georgia on Thursday, December 5 by no less than reigning Miss Universe herself, Catriona Gray of the Philippines. The crown design features intricate 18 karat gold vines and ivy leaves inlaid with more than 1,700 diamonds. The centerpiece is a 62.83 karat golden canary diamond. It's flanked by two smaller diamonds cut from the same stone, mined from Botswana. The ivy leaf and vine motif is meant to represent the seven continents and the interconnection of the world's communities. The crown is priced at 5 million US dollars. This is the fifth crown to be used by Miss Universe in the past 15 years. Reigning Miss Universe Catriona Gray was crowned with the Mikimoto crown created by the famed Japanese Pearl Company. The Miss Universe crown, with a motif of a rising phoenix, debuted in 2002 with the pageant's 50th anniversary and was retired in 2007 before returning to use in 2017. Miss Universe Philippines Gazini Ganados wholeheartedly represents the Philippines even at the crown unveiling. The Miss Universe 2019 preliminary rounds and national costume competition are taking place Friday, December 6 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's 9 a.m. Saturday day December 7 time in the Philippines. The events will be hosted by 2018 Miss Universe Catriona Gray. Hey everyone, Catriona Gray here, Miss Universe. I cannot wait to host this year's preliminary and national costume competition. See you there! Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this December 6, 2019. I am William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening, everyone.